Welcome to Business Talk here on Business Tech. Now, remember before COVID and uh, Klaus Schwab, the founder of the World Economic Forum, coined the term fourth industrial revolution. Then we had President Cyril Ramaphosa establishing a commission on 4IR back in 2019, and that was really tasked to identify the relevant policies and strategies and action plans that the government needed to take to unlock the the broad promise of the fourth industrial revolution in technology. But then COVID happened and uh, pretty much overnight, all of those plans were upended and in fact stress tested because we were thrown into this future, which was generated by Zoom and Teams and the ability to work from home and really the 4IR concept became tangible to almost everyone overnight. Now, someone who has seen this era evolve from the front row seats during her career is Laziwe Maseko, who's an executive for digital software engineering at BCX. Laziwe, welcome to the show. Firstly, how did you get into uh, ICT, which is still a fairly male-dominated industry? Thank you, Michael, and thank you for having me. So how I got involved was actually quite a pleasant surprise or, or accident. I had meant to be writing a a test that day, and I picked up the IT test instead of the analytical chemistry test. So I wrote the wrong aptitude test. And as a result, I was afforded or provided the uh, the bursary, and I grabbed it with both hands, and I never looked back. Wow. And that, as they say in in, in the classics, is is that, I mean, that's remarkable how one moment like that can change the course of your career. And you have had a long and storied career in ICT. What changes have you seen in the landscape over the years? Because it's the one industry where the more things change, the faster they seem to change. That is definitely true. And a lot of changes over the years. Well, one I must say is it's become easier to access technology than when I first started. I always make the example of a cell phone where it's so much more than just the voice communication tool that it started as, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Another exciting change for me particularly is the participation of women. As you've said, um, it is still male dominated, but definitely far more women participating in the field than when I started. Another change is the accelerated rate at which we throw out or put out solutions. Gone are the days when business needs to get, used to give IT a, a directive. And we go away for a few months and say, business, here's what we've done for you. No, how we build software particularly and our solutions these days is in a collaborative manner with, uh, with business. And it, it's incremental. So gone are the days where you where IT would go into a black hole and emerge once once we were ready i'm so pleased to hear that i've got two young daughters aged five and eight and as a pathway for them to pursue technology is a big one now and ict in particular they're they're loving coding at school they're doing a very elementary coding at school level but they have an aptitude for it and I, you know i think leaders like yourself in the industry provide very much an inspirational and aspirational figure for for my daughter. So so, um, chapeau for blazing the trails, because it wasn't always like that. Now, when we talk about 4IR, it it became a bit of a buzzword before COVID, Mm -hmm. as I said in my introduction. Mm -hmm. And I think it did make, it made the concept a lot more tangible. Who would have thought that Mm -hmm. we now on our phones, get hold of a a retailer and we call up our groceries while we can have business meetings uh, in our lounges or offices. What does 4IR mean for South Africa? So the promise of 4IR for South Africa lies in its ability to accelerate economic growth, right? So with the widespread technologies that it now introduces us to us, it gives us an opportunity to solve, you know, our many nations' challenges. So for example, through these digital technologies, how we look at health has changed. How we look at many industries has changed. And you're quite right to say it was accelerated by the lockdowns and the pandemic. It started off from a business continuity perspective, but we are past that now. And it's now become more of how do organizations, whether they be in the public sector or in the private sector, take advantage of these econo- of these technologies for advancement in, eco- in economic growth, and also for, for competitive advantage. You know, everybody's looking for those new uh, revenue streams. So where would they come from? So we look for these technologies to help us understand and take advantage of where we could make use of or take advantage of new revenue streams. 
Now, you say that. I mean, what, what is the adoption rate that you're seeing in South Africa of digital transformation projects? Because I also get the sense that, you know, the ICT of old was often about selling the new shiny thing that you would put on the yeah. IT stack and but potentially yeah. oversold and underdelivered. You said the big mm -hmm. evolution that you've seen is the fact that, you know, ICT practitioners are now really coming at this from a solutions lens to say, well, let's understand the business problem first before we even put any technology layer on top of that. So what, what are you seeing in terms of adoption rates? Adoption rate is definitely on the rise, not to say that we are without our challenges. Our mm -hmm. challenges are, are there and specifically to us as a nation, right? Um, digital skills uh, is still um, our digital literacy. We still need to look at that for us to be able to participate much stronger in, in the digital space. So that remains a challenge for us. Nevertheless, though, the, the, um, for example, if you look at now how we do our e-filing for SARS, right? Uh, highly unlikely that you're going to go queue up at SARS unless you absolutely, absolutely have to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's, it's absolutely on the rise how we get our groceries in the example that we made. So digital transformations are on the right, but we, we are impeded. We do have a digital gap and we are also our digital skills are not quite, or let me say digital literacy is not yeah. quite where... Um, you know, it could be for us to to maximize. Yeah. And I think that digital literacy goes through the organization. So it's from your very, you know, entry level employee all the way up to the C-suite. Everyone needs to have some uh, base form of digital literacy. I don't think everyone needs to be able to speak like the CTO, but you need to understand yeah. the basics and cloud and dashboards and how things are converging to, to empower you. These are the new business tools. So given those challenges, how do we overcome them? I believe it starts with education, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to, and also closer collaboration between specific stakeholders. So there are stakeholders in the private sector or, or participants in the field, such as myself. There's also participants or stakeholders in the education sector. But more importantly, we need to come closer to investment communities. Unfortunately, we live in an age of competing priorities. The business of the day, you know, we need to make sure that we can look five years or, or, or 10 years ahead to say, what do we need at that point in time to ensure that our businesses are still around, our organizations are still relevant, and without addressing the skills gap, unfortunately, we're going to have a hard time. But it's not mm. just the skills, right? So the skills are one thing. We would need to marry it with innovation or the capability or the capacity to innovate those two things put together i think put south africa in a, in, in a very strong position to be a driving force and when we look at the challenges that we have there's no reason for us not to be innovative right yeah. because we have challenges to be solved so the skills together with let's say our environment where you know we need to look at a few things uh, and, and enable innovation that's how we as South Africans are going to move forward. And that's where the promise of the economic growth comes in, right? Yeah. So if we start looking at the education, but not just formal education, match that with innovation, we'll go a long way. And so much of that starts at the top, doesn't it? it it's that tone he said at the top there. You know, if, if it comes to innovation, that's the culture inside the organization. Do you have a culture where people can test fail quickly, learn, and not be afraid to uh, kind of uh, be wrapped over the knuckles. And also that that skills base, it's, again, if you're a leader strategically, you've got to do an audit through a business, don't you, just to find mm -hmm. out what your base mm -hmm. level is mm -hmm. and then move your organization forward incrementally. The bottom line for me, and and it's a really hopeful message, is that there's a lot of opportunity, isn't there? Uh, Dizewe, if you look at the opportunity in 4IR, let's strip away the buzzword. We have all of these challenges, be it access to education, Education, healthcare, government mm. e-services. On the other mm. side of that challenge lies an opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's an opportunity that we have to take advantage of. So these technologies, now whether we be talking about artificial intelligence, cloud adoption, 3D printing, they solve problems. <laughs> at, the, at the end of it, you use a piece of technology to solve a problem. And that's where the promise is. Fantastic. Thank you very much. We're going to leave it there. BCX's Executive for Digital Software and Engineering, uh, Liziwe Maseko, sharing the promise of the fourth industrial revolution here on Business Talk. Uh, take care, Liziwe. Thank you so much.